Hello, fellow teachers. I was inspired by the webinar hosted by Vival this morning entitled The Power of the Flipped Classroom in Distance Learning, which was discussed by Dr. Peter Esperanza of Barstow Community College and Chapman University. He shared with us the successes of this method and even some of his research which shows that the good effects of flipped classroom approach. So basically, it was called flipped classroom because the activities we ask the students to do at school will be flipped or exchanged with the activities we ask them to do at home. For example, homework is usually done at home and discussion at school. In the flipped classroom setup, the discussion is at home through videos and the homework or activities are at school. I found it very useful, especially for our situation right now, kung saan lahat po tayo ay naghahanda para sa new normal in the teaching and learning process. So what I did is I tried it right away with one of my lessons in English 8, which I would like to share with you. And after the video, I would also like to share what I think are the advantages and disadvantages of this approach. So sa maikling sample video po na ito, gagamitin natin yung number three suggestion ni Dr. Esperanza. Full technology, kung saan naka-voice over si teacher while presenting the lesson. Good morning guys, this is Sir Jonel Rocha. So our lesson for today is about propaganda devices. Perhaps you already have an idea of what propaganda devices are with what you can see in the picture. But we would like to define the word itself. So, what is propaganda per se? Well, it is defined as a form of communication that aimed at influencing the attitude of a community towards some cause or position by presenting only one side of the argument can also be defined as publicity to promote something or misleading publicity, deceptive or distorted information that is systematically spread. So we would like to focus on the terms influencing, also the term promoting, deceptive or distorted information. So propaganda devices is a form or propaganda device is a form of communication that aims to influence the public. So this can be used by politicians, advertisers, or sometimes common people. Sometimes we use it ourselves in our everyday conversation. So let's see what are different types of propaganda devices. Number one, card stacking. This is showing the product's best features telling half-truths and omitting or lying about its potential problem. One example of card stacking is this picture. So we can see here a huge sugar-free advertising strategy, but uh, beside it is a very small, not a reduced calorie food. In fact, below we can see 90 calories per serving. So here, this is an example of card stacking because it just focuses on the best features of the product but minimizing on the possible problems. Another example of card stacking is the drug manufacturers. Their ads, they, they put a scheme over the possible harmful side effects of their products or facts that are selected and presented which most effectively strengthen and authenticate the point of view of the propagandist. Now guys, please think of your own example of card stacking that you see around us. Please write it down in your notes. Now let's proceed to the second type of propaganda device that we would like to discuss. Technique number two, name calling. After recording our video of the lesson, we can upload it on YouTube or if you don't want it to be uploaded or seen by everyone, we can send it to 
our class via Messenger or other platforms that are available right now. Of course, like any other approaches, this method has advantages and disadvantages. One advantage is that the students can learn at their own pace. If they do not understand a point in the classroom or discussion, they can always go back to that part of the video. In fact, they can watch the video over and over again. So what does it mean for us teachers? We don't need to repeat the same discussion of the lesson over and over again. Another advantage is that social media platforms like YouTube is very much available right now. There are even promos like one gig of YouTube a day given by some network providers. Others may say that it is hard to learn this method or I do not have enough devices for this. But the truth is, that's another advantage. We can use our own smartphones and everything can easily be learned nowadays for abundant tutorials in the internet are available. On the other hand, one of the disadvantages of this approach is the accessibility for some students who are not capable of using the internet. Of course, we want to be fair with everyone and education should always be for all. So perhaps the module approach which are now prepared by the teachers is the best way for them to learn. So there you have it, fellow teachers. Of course, this presentation can be improved and there's a lot of better approaches in delivering this discussion. Moreover, marami na rin ang gumagawa ng ganitong klase ng approach sa kanilang pagtuturo. You may check them on YouTube. On my part, I just wanted to share it with you because I found it very useful for us as teachers with the realization that distance learning is possible through the wise use of technology. Again, this is Janelle Rocha. If you found this video beneficial and if you would also want to share your own suggestions, comment down below. And please, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching!